couple of years ago, Jaguar brought out their first SUV on the market, the F-Pace, a medium-sized SUV, which has certainly caught on and captured the market very, very well. Well, meet its baby brother. This is the E-Pace, Jaguar's compact premium SUV. This one over here, as you can see, the beautiful flowing lines, very similar lines to the F-Pace and a very similar shape. Very familiar, just obviously slightly smaller. Beautiful 20-inch bag wheels, which are pretty much covered in dust over here because we've brought this vehicle out to the bush. Yeah, we brought the cat back, back to the bush, you can say, for a change. And we've done a bit of rough roading, not off-roading, because although this is an all-wheel drive vehicle, it's not a four-wheel drive, but we've certainly, as you can see, taken it along a lot of dirt. It's got beautiful flowing lines. It's got all the lines. It's got all the grace and pace of a cat, of a Jaguar as they're known, and as Jaguars have always been known. And you come around to the rear end of the car as well. You can see over here the integrated built-in spoiler on the roof over here. And if you zoom in nicely over here, you'll see this is the D40, D240. What that means is it's Jaguar's diesel, Ingenium 2-litre diesel engine putting out 177 kilowatts and 500 newton meters of torque. I repeat, 500 newton meters. That's a lot of torque to do some talking. You can see in HSE trim, which is the top trim, you've got the skid plate at the back. You've got, of course, the twin exhaust over there. It's got a pretty mean look to it as well. But HSE also means luxury. You'll see a lot more of that on the inside. Behind the wheel of the E-Pace, you'll see that the instrumentation is probably pretty standard for a Jaguar, but to point out a few points to you, we've done 446 kilometers on this test, 445, averaging 7.8 liters per hundred. Not bad for the kind of power that this car has. Another feature on the test car, if you look over there at my finger, you'll see we do have a heads-up display as well, which at the moment is showing lane departure, that I'm in park, and that we're not moving zero kilometers an hour. So you do have all those features. Of course, navigation when it's being in use is repeated over here as well. Navigation instructions where I'm showing the trip computer right now. You move over to the center screen and you'll see that it is very much the familiar Jaguar Land Rover screen that of course you can scroll through and you have many, many functions over here, seats, where you can adjust temperature on the seats, valet mode, it has all of them for you. And of course, navigation, which works exceptionally well and is very, very clear. Telephone as well works very, very well. You come down over here to your dual zone climate control. Again, very comfortable, very nice to use. And over here, unusually, not the rotary Jaguar Land Rover controller that you get for the gear shift anymore, but a pistol shift which works exceptionally well with a nine speed i repeat nine speed automatic gearbox as standard on this version over here of course is a very important control and that is your transmission multi-mode transmission switch which can take you from eco mode through comfort into what jaguar call dynamic mode which of course will adjust all your features of your engine mapping, your gearing and items like that. So you have all of those available to you. But HSE trim is about comfort and about luxury. You can see on the dashboard over here, the beautiful leather trim in this light tan color, which of course is a repeat of the coloring on the seats themselves with a quilted effect. You've got memory on both seats in front and of course, multiple multi electric adjustment on both front seats. And on this particular test car, we do have the beautiful large panoramic roof. So it certainly has a lot of the features with, of course, that Ingenium engine, as I mentioned, the diesel, which can give you pretty good economy, I believe. That 7.8, which is my average over the period, I think is pretty good too. Prices, of course, can vary and it does depend on the extras that you want. But in this premium compact SUV segment, pricing is not the most important feature. It's a Jag, yes. It's got the handling like a Jag will give you. It's got all wheel drive. It's got all of those features. This particular version, the HSE, you're looking would start at about 850,000 Rand. And depending on extras you want, you could probably up that by 50 to 70,000 Rand on individual cars as and when you want to use them. 
overall this new segment of the market that seems to have developed of premium compact SUVs, which of course includes the BMW X2, the Volvo XC40, the Mercedes GLA comes into it, and there are one or two other contenders as well. It's an interesting segment, and it certainly bears looking at if a vehicle of the sort suits your purposes. Check it out. I think it's worthwhile. For Motor Matters, I'm Alan R, and I'll see you next time.